In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. As the effects of the pandemic continue to worsen in our times, it only seems appropriate that we pray the Mass in time of pandemic to continue to ask God's guidance, his providence, but most importantly, his power and his might over us during these times. As we come now to celebrate these sacred mysteries, we prepare for them by acknowledging our sins and asking our Lord's forgiveness. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and lead us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, our refuge in every danger, to whom we turn in our distress. In faith we pray, look with compassion on the afflicted, grant eternal rest to the dead, comfort to mourners, healing to the sick, peace to the dying, strength to health care workers, wisdom to our leaders, and the courage to reach out to all in love so that together we may give glory to your holy name. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Hear the word of the Lord, princes of Sodom. Listen to the instructions of our God, people of Gomorrah. What care I for the number of your sacrifices, says the Lord? I have had enough of your whole burnt rams and fat of fatlings. In the blood of calves, lambs, goats, I find no pleasure. When you come in to visit me, who asks these things of you? Trample my courts no more. Bring no more worthless offerings, and incense is loathsome to me. New moon and Sabbath, calling of assemblies, octaves with wickedness, these I cannot bear. Your new moons and festivals I detest. They weigh me down. I tire of the load. When you spread out your hands, I close my eyes to you. Though you pray the more, I will not listen. Your hands are full of blood. Wash yourself clean. Put away your misdeeds from before my eyes. Cease doing evil. Learn to do good. Make justice your aim. Redress the wrongs. Hear the orphan's plea. Defend the widow. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. To the upright, I will show the saving power of God. To the upright, I will show the saving power of God. Not for your sacrifices do I rebuke you, for your burnt offerings are before me always. I take from your house no bullock, no goats out of your fold. To the upright, I will show the saving power of God. Why do you recite my statutes and profess my covenant with your mouth? Though you Though you hate discipline and cast my words behind you. To the upright I will show the saving power of God. When you do these things, shall I be deaf to it? Or do you think that I am like yourself? I will correct you by drawing them up before your eyes. He has offered praise as a sacrifice glorifies me. And to him that goes the right way, I will show the salvation of God. To the upright, I will show the saving power of God.
be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his apostles, Do not think that I have come to bring peace upon the earth. I have come to bring not peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And one enemies will be those of his household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take up his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds his life will lose it. And whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Whoever receives you receives me. And whoever receives me receives the one who sent me. Whoever receives a prophet because he is a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever receives a righteous man because he is righteous will receive a righteous man's reward. And whoever gives only a cup of cold water to one of these little ones to drink because he is a disciple. Amen, I say to you, he will surely not lose his reward. When Jesus finished giving these commands to his 12 disciples, he went away from that place to teach and to preach in their towns. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> so, welcome back. Welcome back to the 7 BC Mass before coffee. Uh, since I've been here, it's always been, well, since the pandemic and since being assigned here, it's always been 8 a.m. And I was wondering, since I'm relatively new uh, as a deacon in this parish, what would be, but you've turned up in larger numbers, it looks, than our 8 a.m. Mass. So praise be to God. Let us use this time of transition to try to get back to some sense of normal, whatever that's going to look like. It's going to be different in the future. And we hope that this small transition will just be a little step towards that transition back to a normal way of life. And so we transitioned again this week in the lectionary cycle from last week from that speed crash course through Hosea to this week where we'll have a crash course through Isaiah. And he starts off with a bang right away in the first chapter uh, with the Lord with him prophesying, speaking for the Lord to the people of the Northern Kingdom uh, in pretty strong words. You know he's a prophet because you couldn't think this on your own, some of the rebukes. To be called princes of Sodom, to be called people of Gomorrah, could be the lowest um, rebuke or, or strongest rebuke that one could get. What do I care for your sacrifices? I don't even hear your prayers. This is a strong rebuke uh, when it comes to hearing from the Lord who gave his people through that and marking the sign of covenant with sacrifice to say, I don't even want them anymore. I don't even smell your incense. Pretty strong words from the prophet. And the psalmist continues and picks up this theme in Psalm 50 today. What, when you do these things, these things that you think you're offering to me, I'm deaf to it. I don't even hear you. Could you imagine the Lord telling you, I don't even hear your prayers? I will correct you. You don't like my discipline, and you cast my words behind you, and I will correct you. And then we get to the gospel, and it starts off, don't think I've come to bring peace, but a sword division. I'm going to set your households against each other. And so I ask you, where's the good news in these scriptures today? Because at a first reading or casual glance, it's easy to, uh, to gloss over and to not see the good news. 
and to assume something is there that's not. In a word, we are to receive from the texts that which is there, and what we are not to do is put into the text something that is not there. Biblical scholars call this exegesis, the taking from the scriptures, but not eisegesis, which is putting into there, putting into the scriptures what I want them to say. And when we receive from the scriptures, we've got to remember a few things. Time, the time in which the scripture was written, the audience to whom the scripture uh, and the words were proclaimed to. The context within the scripture, how does this fit into the rest of this passage? Keep in mind that the lectionary uh, doesn't always go through a full chapter, and we have to kind of look before and beyond to get the full context of that. We also have to look at the context when we read, pray upon, and preach upon this, the context of Scripture in salvation history. Since the beginning, when God created the people, created the nation, we have, we have you know, turned our back on him and come back to him. And God's rebuke, his discipline, and his correction of his people is clearly throughout all the new, uh, Old and New Testaments. Discipline and correction from the Lord. So today, we may not have the prophet Isaiah or Jeremiah or Ezekiel or the minor prophets and all those that we've been going through our lectionary cycle, but we do still have the prophetic word of the Lord. We have our conscience and a well-formed conscience informed by prayer and the word of the Lord is what we have to listen today. So there is good news in our readings today, and the good news is that of hospitality. You see, we receive, how we receive those we meet can and will determine our eternal reward. Jesus said, I did not come to bring peace. That didn't mean he came to bring war. He said, my peace is the peace in the uh, eternal, at the eternal banquet in heaven. If you think I've come to stop this warring army from fighting with this warring army or these people from this people or this captain of this division, uh, that's not the peace. Peace meaning lack of war? No. But he did bring a sword. St. Paul calls the word of God like a two-edged sword not piercing bodily parts, but piercing our hearts. And reflecting on that word of the Lord, then and only then, and loving God with all of our heart, mind, and soul above everything else, even family ties, is more important than some peaceful or lack of war among nations. The hospitality, how we receive those we meet. We need to be hospitable and generous. Hospitality allows us to encounter the presence of God in others, usually in those whom we least expect to find him. There you'll find the prophet. And then we share our love with them. We become fully alive as Christians through the generous giving of ourselves to others. And so the good news that we have today is that we too, if we are hospitable, how we love our God and our neighbor, well, we too will not lose our eternal reward. We humbly beseech our God now that his mercy will allow him to hear our prayers. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, may God the Father grant him wit the wisdom of the Spirit and the heart of the Son to unify the Church. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who serve in positions of civil authority, may God's peace reign through them in place of the, in place of the sword and division. We pray to the Lord. Lord, 
for those suffering from unjust treatment or discrimination. May the Lord encourage them and deliver them from their trials. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For this community of faith, may God provide us courage and strength as we carry our own crosses. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For medical professionals, that God may guide their hands and hearts and that they may be protected from sickness as they care for all those afflicted during this current pandemic. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially Barbara Arnold, may the mercy and love of God enfold them and bring them to eternal life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our Heavenly Father, you ask great things of us <clears throat> that we may strive to follow the path of the cross of your Son. Hear our prayers we make to you this day through Christ our Lord. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of children for the prayers and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all of us. Accept, O Lord, the gifts we offer in this time of peril. May they become for us, by your power, a source of healing and of peace through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, to your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin, fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people. He stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we too declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, 
He took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. And therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and the blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Felipe, our Bishop, and all the clergy, Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God Almighty, Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Now at the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. O Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but upon the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of our Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. O Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. 
O God, from whose hand we have received the medicine of eternal life, grant that through this sacrament we may glory in the fullness of heavenly healing through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.